Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video, and today we're going to be reacting to five ways British and American meal etiquette is very different. And we are back with Lost in the Pond. This guy is absolutely hilarious. He makes great videos, so make sure you subscribe to his channel. And also, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're new here and hit the like button. But, I'm watching this video about 20 minutes after I just ate breakfast. So, I'm gonna have to compare my meal etiquette to what he's talking about in the video. <laughs> but yeah, let's get it. If they hear your accent and you are American, their ears might prick up a bit thinking, here comes a payday. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost, lost in, in the pond. pond. And one of those memos pertains to how we eat, dining etiquette. It is so important, especially when you're meeting your American family for the first time. I'm not talking from experience, maybe just a bit. Cultural differences around the dinner table don't just come down to the words we use, like chips versus fries, or the dishes that we serve. So, you know, America's pecan pie versus Britain's spotted dick. And that is an actual dessert, okay? Look it up, just I not know. on your work computer. But it's also about some of the mechanisms that we use to get it into our mouths. I'm still talking about food. And also some of the customs and politeness norms that comes with the process of eating. And so without further crab rangoon, here are five ways that British and American eating etiquette is very, very different. I just love that guy. Whether you call it cutlery, like we do in Britain, or silverware, or flatware, or in this case plasticware, because, you know, we are rationing, we can all agree that without them, meal times would be very, very messy, especially in America where they put sauce on everything. But the real question is, how do we hold them? And this was part of my existential crisis after I moved to the United States, because I grew up learning the European style, or as it might be known here, the continental style. And when I say that, I'm referring to what is the official utensil etiquette, right? As opposed to the official American etiquette. And I'm gonna show you, I think anyway, some of the differences. I personally don't have either etiquette completely down because in my wife's words, I still eat like a toddler. <laughs> but it mostly comes down to how we hold the fork. In Britain, you sort of, you hold it kind of like that, I think. So you've got it, the, the end of it's touching your palm and then you sort of grasp it with your thumb and your pointy finger and it's there for pointing downward, right? And you stick it into the potatoes or the strawberries or the spotted dick. And notice it's in my left hand, that's gonna be important in a moment. And in the other hand, you have your knife, right? Usually like this, with the pointy finger right there, and it's touching your palm again. So consistent on both hands, right? It's almost an extension of you. You're, you're almost Wolverine, but from the United Kingdom or Europe. And then you do this, right? Usually at a lower level, you just, you wouldn't be able to see it because my arms are off screen now. So I'll put them back there. And then you cut into the potatoes or the strawberries or the creamy spotted dick. I mean, you can come with custard. That's, that's normal. And voila, and put it in your mouth. There's nothing on this. It's not, this isn't that scene in Hook where they eat invisible food. It goes this way around. Right, with the tines facing downward toward your tongue. In America, it's quite a bit different, right? So people will hold their fork like this, with the tines facing Facts. upward. In other words, to kind of scoop up the food, right? So they'll do that, and, and actually sometimes, not every time, I mean, I'm sure there are people that circumvent all of the things you hear in this very list, but sometimes Americans won't even use a knife, right? You'll just see them scoop something up, maybe a potato, we won't go through the entire list again, put it in their mouth. If they want to cut up things in that way, sometimes I'll do it with the fork. I'm not gonna lie, guys. That's me. I'm not even kidding. I don't use knives. When I want to cut something, I cut it with the side of the fork. And sometimes, when it's like a piece of meat and it's too thick to cut, and I don't feel like getting a knife, I lift up the entire steak and take a bite. And then put it down. Yo, that's actually like a caveman. Oh, I feel embarrassed talking about that. Right, don't recommend it with plastic <laughs> forks. You know, you can get through these pretty quickly if you do that. But if they do use a knife, they may turn the fork like this into the potato and then cut like that. You've got it there, you turn it back around, it's in your gob, and there you go. Bob's your uncle, you've got gob. potatoes. And you know, that's what a lot of Americans do. My father-in-law though did this. He had it like that and like that. <laughs> He'd turn it that way, that way, and then like that. It was, it sort of looked, I should, I should tell you that my in-laws were cavemen, but it was through those very cavemen slash dear relatives of my wife that I was first introduced to our next entry. 
Yes, oh. saying grace. This one is quite a tough entry in many ways because, you know, in order to talk about it, I do have to somewhat generalize. And also, I don't have much data to back up what I'm about to say. It's more observationally driven, right? Um, so when I lived in England for 27 years of my life, I don't say that with disdain. It was a good time. Um, but in all that time, I don't really remember... Uh, sitting down to a dinner function of any kind and really sort of saying grace beforehand. In other words, kicking off the meal with a sort of faith-based thanks. Now, part of that, and again, this is where the generalization comes in, so bear with me, but in England, we, we tend to be less sort of like publicly open or just sort of even privately open, if you can be, among your family members about your religious beliefs. Whereas in the United States, I think people are more sort of proud of that, whatever their religious oh, faith yeah. is. And so sometimes in some families, and this again could be regional, so I might well be generalizing, but some families, including the extended relatives that I married into, not I didn't marry them, I married into the, the family. Some families, and I gather maybe quite a lot of families here in the United States, particularly at special events like Thanksgiving or maybe even a homecoming of some kind, will sort of say grace before uh, the meal. And there'll usually be one family member who stands up and says it on behalf of the entire group. And then you say amen and go about your way. For me, this was, it was quite weird at first, I think. Now, I'm very respectful of other people's religious beliefs. I just, I didn't really know what to do except just sort of sit there and then wait for it to be done. And then, because I had half a mind on the turkey. So what are you going to do? And because I'm generalizing here, it's important for me to say that this is my experience. I'd be very interested to hear other people's experiences, other Europeans' experiences of coming here and maybe having to say grace when they're not used to it. Um, or, you know, Americans that don't themselves practice this. I've also heard it can go one step further here where the whole family holds hands. You know, I definitely draw the line at that, especially right now. The best way that I can put <laughs> this for British people watching back home is, you know, in football, when you know somebody dies and they have a minute silence within the stadium and then when the minute silence is up they all erupt in applause and all of that it's kind of like that minus the applause you know it's just an amen but the energy after that is great because you all want to talk into your food and because the energy is so good that leads us on to our next entry yo i gotta say something so i agree with what he was saying like you can't generalize with it like it, it's not really a rural or city thing like if there's people in the cities who are religious and will say grace i'm talking about america obviously and then there's people in rural areas who are, will say grace like it just it depends on the family and there's a lot of people of different religions in the u.s so i don't know it definitely is a traditional thing though i mean we are a christian nation it's literally in the pledge of allegiance and that's like our history in the united states so i i always think of it in that way but I don't know. I My family never said grace, really. Maybe before, like, Easter or something, but never before every meal. Let me know what it's like in the, uh, the UK. He was saying in England it's not very popular to say grace. So let me know if your family says grace. And like I said, I'm always going to be respectful, regardless of your religious beliefs. But let's see what he's segueing into. Oh. oh, I don't mind a bit of chatter and exceptionally weird noises. And at an American dinner table, you're going to get a lot of chatter. Usually, again, this is another generalization, but on the whole, oh, yeah. this is my experience. And I'm one of those people who doesn't <laughs> think that Americans are always loud, as the stereotype dictates. But one exception tends to be in restaurants, right? I do hear the volume go up there as compared to Britain, where it's it feels like we're always battling with this war within ourselves to not air our dirty laundry in public. I'm not saying we don't talk at dinner tables, don't get me wrong, it just, it feels observationally once again, and again, there's no data on this, there's not somebody going around measuring the decibels in every restaurant <laughs> in either country, especially right now, because they're, they're all closed. But that's my <laughs> general experience of it. Now, I could be getting thrown off course a little bit here, because, you know, my, my, my wife's family are really loud. Don't, don't tell them I said that, although this is a public video. They know it's true, I've told them before, and that's why we've not spoken in a year. But here in America, you might be in a restaurant, sitting oh. down with just one other person, trying to have a quiet, 
intimate conversation and to your right there's this really loud family with a five-year-old running around with a stupid hat on that he got from the restaurant right so they're further enhancing the, the volume of said family and then on the other side there's a there's clearly what is a date happening and the woman is just sitting there quietly looking quite glum while the man very audibly and haphazardly talks about all of the fortune 500 companies he's worked for and she stares into space presumably thinking of all the ways that she can get out of there but on the other <laughs> hand once you do get used to that sort of raised volume it does add to the atmosphere you know and if you're already in a good mood and you enter somewhere where you know, thousands oh, that's a huge restaurant hundreds maybe where there's lots of people and they're in a good mood and it just sort of bounces off the walls you know but speaking of restaurants that brings us on to our next entry servers 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 tips I know in America we tip and you guys don't tip, so I'm saying it already. Because my heart you does guys don't go tip. out to all of the servers and anybody else to whom this applies around the world who can't go into work right now. And a huge thank you to delivery servers who are able to keep people fed who might uh, need it. But, you know, back in peacetime when the restaurants were still open, um, there was quite a marked difference between, you know, British servers and American servers and, and, and the way they sort of conduct themselves at, at the dinner table while you're eating your dinner. In Britain, they're quite standoffish, and I, I know that's just a trait of British people in general, I get that, but they, they don't have the incentive, which we'll talk about in a minute, to constantly be coming back to your table and seeing how you're doing, checking if you need a refill on that water, because you probably won't get one anyway. I'm joking, of course you'll get a free refill on your water, just nothing else. Often, know this, if you want their attention, you're going to have to get their attention yourself, and that includes when it comes time to pay the bill. Whereas in the United States, and each restaurant has its different policy on this you know the waiting staff will come to your table every five minutes usually just to see how you're doing and and it seemingly doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a seriously one-sided conversation about the fortune 500 companies you've worked for they will still come over and go hey what's up how's that tenderloin working out for you and there are a couple of big reasons i think Thanks. that american serving staff do this uh, firstly the company often dictates it it's seen as a kind of data-driven way of you know having good customer service but having good customer service could well dictate this oh yeah have they tried antifreeze with that no well he might go back to his milk phase eventually yeah yeah so the dreaded tip or at least it was dreaded to me when i first moved to america <laughs> actually when i landed at philadelphia airport this is the first time i remember having to sort of navigate the american tipping system uh, because i bought a drink at a bar at that very airport and having bought the jack daniels or six I, i'm not a good <laughs> flyer this I turned to the gentleman next to me and I asked him, how does tipping work? And, you know, he very, very kindly offered, ah, well, whatever you, the amount is on your receipt, just give them 85% of that. And that, that's about good. That's standard. That, that was a lie. And I ended up almost bankrupt. Firstly, in the United States, regardless of the amount, it's very much expected that you do tip because that's basically how servers make their wage. And the standard amount that you're expected to tip is the complete opposite of 85%. It's 15%, right? Um, but if you if you thought it was good service, or just to be sort of a good person, really, um, you can you can 20. definitely tip more than that. I typically tip, just try saying that after six whiskeys. I did that night. I typically tip, particularly if I'm on a trip, 20% or you know I might even round up to 21 if it kind of requires it. Tipping of some kind is expected here. In the UK if you're thinking of going there firstly don't do that right now but you know if after all this blows over you are fancying going to the UK then you you're not required to tip at all right I mean you, people get paid a sort of living wage more or less for being a server in the UK it's good practice, you know, if you want to do that, you certainly can. 10% um, is recommended. And, you know, growing up in the UK, I never really did tip all that often, I must say. I think if I were to live there now, I probably would do so a bit more. It's not expected. I mean, servers aren't going to expect you to tip. Although, if they hear your accent and you are American, their ears might prick up a bit thinking, here comes a payday, right? Whereas it's the other way around here. As soon as servers hear a British accent, they must be filled with dread. Or maybe that's not true. Maybe servers hear a British accent and think, hmm, he's ripe for manipulation. You know, I've had some bad experiences. Uh, that's it for this episode. Oh, Thank you for joining man. me today. And, you know, it's kind of sad that I couldn't practice a lot of these things for the video, um, except for the knives and forks, you know. And
All right, guys. Um, shout out to Lost in the Pond. Like I said, that guy makes bangers. But let me know if you guys have had a similar experience with tipping. I know. I mean, I t so first of all, I have a Patreon. The link is in the description if you want to join. But shout out to all of my patrons, and I've talked to them. You can message me on there, and I talk to you and stuff. But I've talked to a few of them, and one of them was telling me. So I'm gonna just. I'm not gonna talk about his. Uh, personal info or anything but he works at a restaurant and some Americans came in from New York City and they like they tipped a lot to him he was so surprised um, but yeah that that was actually completely relating to what this guy was saying I forgot his name I need to learn lost in the pond's name but yeah um, that just reminded me of that because that's funny um, but yeah let me know if you guys have any similar experiences with the tipping hopefully no 85% tip on five jack daniels that would be a lot of money but guys thanks so much for watching uh comment some stuff in the comment section that you want me to check out and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace